Welcome back to the shop everybody. Today I'm excited because we get to continue working on this big giant blacksmith vise. We had this jack all mounted up here on the bottom, but I have no way to attach it to the top. So I want to pick up right where we left off and build some sort of bracket system to hold this jack into place. We obviously have a pivot at the bottom and we need a pivot at the top. So I need some sort of curtain rod, I call it, to be able to have this rod pivot on. I want this kind of shaped bracket that kind of reminds me of like a connecting rod and it's going to sit right up in here on the frame of the vise. And the bottom part of this will act just like a piston connecting rod, creating a channel to put a pivot pin. And I'm going to probably fasten it from the side with some screws and this will give me that axis that I need at the top. This is going to pose some challenges because these plates are obviously been welded at a five degree angle. So I have two choices here. I can put this connecting rod straight and have a funky gap, or I could lay these brackets on its side, which will then lead me to have to cut a five degree angled hole through this part. So I think I'm gonna choose the simple and clean approach, made against the side and putting a five degree angle through this hole, which I think the water jet can do pretty easily. So we have some water jet cutting and some machining to make this bracket come to life. So let's go do it. So we got our five degree hole cut in our bracket, which turned out perfect. The next step we gotta do is drill and tap into the sides of this cap and be able to lock this pin into place. I'm using super glue to temporarily hold the cap to the body. That way when I drill through, it's gonna hold everything perfectly lined up. I'm boring a really tight fitting hole that fits the ramp perfectly. This is gonna keep the rod from sliding off and it's also gonna be easy to remove or replace the jacket at any moment in time. Everything turned out fabulous. The jack fits nice and tight inside the frame rails of this vise. But what I do like is just how easy it is to use. So now all I got to do is just push my thumb on this air actuated cylinder and this jaw will start to close. And there it is in its fully closed position. That took, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. So to open it, all you gotta do is turn the lever on the side. And it opens up. So what is the overall design intent for this jack? Well, it's not to move long distances with the arm. It's to give that last little bit of movement and to really increase the power. We're not gonna be looking to move the jaw from its furthest open position and all the way closed. We will do that with a screw a little bit later. So the center gravity is right here in this pivot and even when the jaw is closed, it wants to open. So naturally compressing the jack and the springs are just there to take up its own weight. And this is gonna be really important for the next step when we go to put our hand screw in this location right here. The next thing I wanna tackle is the screw to push this arm. 
So there's a little bit of design criteria that I want to follow and meet. So let me show you what I want to do. Because this vise is so large, I want to ditch to the traditional style handle and go for a hand wheel. This is going to give me better access to the handle from different points along the machine. And then when I add some bearings to it, it's going to be much easier to turn. In order to make this happen, the wheel needs to stay in the same location and not move with the jaw. And then to complicate things even more, the arm needs to detach itself from the screw when the jack is in use. So we need to come up with something clever so that the jack and the screw can work together and not self-destruct. And hopefully this will speed up the opening and closing process. So that's all the design criteria that I'm gonna to try to follow. So let's see what we come up with. I'm looking for this tube to have a telescoping action, so I need to get rid of that weld seam. The fastest way to do it is a real sharp chisel and a real good file. I have to make a custom screw because it's a really unique part. I made a video where we tested a whole bunch of screws specifically for this vise, so go check that out if you're interested. Let's geek out for a moment and I'll show you how all these parts work together. These are two bushings that are gonna get welded into the frame on the back. Inside these two bushings are going to be this gigantic pin slash bearing holder. This needs to be able to rotate because it's gonna follow an arc that the arm travels so it needs to be able to, to pivot. This locking groove goes inside right there. This set screw to hold it from walking out either end. Inside both of this pin is going to be thrust bearings. The one on the back here is only gonna be used maybe if I ever wanted to use the arm to pull. This one is gonna be the pusher thrust bearing. It sits in there like that. And then all gets contained with this left-handed screw. Just something like that. And then to hold all this in place is a left-handed locking nut.
And this locking nut has a lock screw to hold the backlash and keep the pressure just where I want. Okay, now the screw can't come out and it locks the bearings into place. And this solves problem one that I had that the handle stays in the same fixed location and doesn't move when the spindle turns. The next thing is this is a left-handed thread because I want the handle to be righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. And if this was a right-hand thread, it would be contracting as if you turn right. So I want the ram to move advanced. So this needs to be left-handed thread. And this is the nut that it's gonna be rotating on. This is also the ram that's gonna push on the arm. Now you're probably saying, why is it square and not round? Well, what happens is I need to be able to contain this nut from turning, so it needs to stay in place, and it's gonna stay in place with this slip yoke. And it's going to be attached to a pin, which is gonna prevent this from turning, which is gonna prevent this from turning. Shoop. Goes on just like that, okay? And then to hold this end in place, we have two more bushings that get welded into the framework and then held in by a pin. And just like that, we have a fully advancing screw and held together. Now the genius behind this is that at any point in time, if I wanna use the hydraulic cylinder, the cylinder can take away and take the arm wherever we want to, and it doesn't strip the threads out of the nut. You release the jack, boop, it comes back to where it needs to be, and all's good. You wanna advance it with a screw, you can do so. Or use the hydraulic cylinder and have it repeat and come back. It's pretty simple. This will prevent the threads from getting stripped apart. Let's get this thing installed on the machine. <laughs> Voila! <laughs> Magic. Now that we got this assembly all installed, I'm tired of looking at this empty spot in this jaw, so let's fill it up. I'm going to be using the 1942 Kearney and Trucker milling machine to hog off some material. This machine is roughly the same size, shape, weight, and has the same horsepower as the Cincinnati Shaper. Which one do you guys think can remove metal more quickly? All right, we're making good progress here. We got the block all machined out. It's just floating in here for now because I want to save the final welding until I get everything all lined up. But the next thing I want to do is get a jaw all made up for this side and this side. And I'm going to be using a piece of two inch by four cold roll. And it will sit right there on the jaw and then we'll make one that matches this profile for this dynamic jaw. I'm gonna be using some cold roll only because I didn't have access at this time to grab some 4140 to make some hardened jaws, but that's something we can do a little bit later on. So we're gonna use this just as some good general purpose jaws that are somewhat hard, but somewhat soft. We won't mind galling them all up and getting them all tore up. So the bolt holes in these are gonna provide me to be able to put some soft jaws in, be able to put any kind of cool attachments that I want to add to this vise at a later date. Maybe put some big, long, wide jaws, tall, skinny, narrow, hard, soft. So one of the drawbacks of this design is how the jaw pivots. And if you picture your finger and your thumb 
and how they pinch together, they don't move linearly. But this concept is just basically a big version of a pair of channel locks or basically every single plier that you use every day. So it still works. There's two points of contact that need to come together and this jaw profile is gonna accept that whole motion of movement to be able to push up against this fixed jaw right here. So I'm ready to tackle profiling this jaw out right here out of this two by four piece of bar stock. And I think the best tool to cut this out is going to be the shaper. So let's head over to the shaper and start whittling some metal. One of the most difficult things about machining is fixturing and holding parts. And this is where I think the shaper really has an advantage with this huge vise and to be able to clamp and hold parts from just about any angle. So we got our jaws all machined out, all our holes are drilled in it, and now it's time to put the knurling on the face or the contact area. I kind of want a swirl pattern and I'm gonna do it on the milling machine. The neat part is this is only gonna take maybe a few seconds, so it's really fast to be able to do this. And it's also gonna give me a gradient pattern look, which means the knurling is gonna be coarse on the bottom and a little bit finer on the top, which might be kind of neat. So here's how I set up the milling machine. First thing I do is grab the largest face mill that I have, and this one happens to be a four inch. Then I remove all the inserts out of it except for one. If you look at the insert geometry, the nose radius is really large. So it's gonna give a scoop and a smooth action. It's not really sharp V because this insert's gonna be hammering and I really want that tip to be kind of strong. The next thing I do is I set the milling machine to around 500 RPMs or so. This is gonna vary depending on what kind of pattern you're looking for. The next thing I wanna do is set the cutter depth to around seven thousandths cut depth. So it's not really taking off very much. Then the next thing is the feed. How quickly that this jaw is going to be cruising over the top of it and that's going to be set with the power feed at its fastest and I just use the quick button right here to transfer this cutter across the work surface as quickly as possible and it's going to leave behind a really cool pattern. So let's do it and see how this baby turns out. Got the jaws all fitted up here. I think it turned out amazing. They fit perfect. The neural looks really, really, really nice. It's not too exaggerated that it could cause damage, but just subtle enough to be able to grip and hold parts. So I like the way that turned out. I do look forward to changing out these jaws at a little bit later date and trying something like some 4140 or some W2 and make some real serious hardened jaws for this bad boy. So the vise has been all tacked together and boy am I glad that I do that because I made a change to this jack base. Now the original design means when this jaw is cycling through its motion, the jack is also cycling at the same time. Now that could put excess wear on the cylinder and seals inside of it. And since I'm gonna be using the screw probably 80% of the time, I didn't think that was a very good idea. So I put this slot into this bottom base. The slot is there to separate the jack from the moving jaw. Now it can move independently from the jack itself. I like this idea because it frees up the jaw and it makes it feel a lot lighter than what it did before. So the downside to this modification is that the jack has to play catch up. So say the jaw is halfway through its stroke, 
you tighten the valve, and now there's a little bit of gap that the jack has to take up before it is the major force applier, which that's a small trade-off in my opinion to not put any excess wear on the jack itself. We're so close to finishing this vise, we have a few more things to build and fabricate, but we'll do that in the next video and I'll see you guys there. Welcome back to the shop everybody. Today I'm excited because we get to continue to work on this big giant blacksmith vise. Good. Good. Ha, 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 ha.